start. Yeah. All right. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Robert Friedman. I'm the portfolio strategist for Hive Chicago, which is the Chicago uh, location of the uh, global Hive learning networks. Um, we're one of almost a dozen at this point uh, as our network of networks grows sites where um, motivated civic leaders, educators, um, just vested interests, and tech companies convene together to really try to reimagine and transform what learning looks like in a city in the 21st century. That's this coming century, right? Yeah, this one. Um, and the idea being that we really believe that learning isn't something that happens just in the classroom and isn't only recognized by grades and by uh, you know degrees and certificates, but that learning is a process that happens anytime, anywhere, and we should be able to recognize it when it does, no matter where or how or when it happens, right? And so what does that mean to acknowledge, to recognize learning anytime, anywhere? What does that mean to create an environment, an ecosystem that encourages young people to learn inside and out? the classroom we were exploring. Sometimes this framework that we use to talk about learning is called connected learning, um, which resonates with the idea of being connected online or connected digitally, but is really more about the fact that there are, we need to build systems that connect the different experiences that young people have, whether it's peer-to-peer -peer learning, learning at home, learning that's interest-driven, Right? So it's connected in the sense that it really connects up the different kinds and the different people that help to cultivate and curate learning for young people. Um, so Hive Chicago, which is one of the many hives, there's a hive in New York, Toronto, uh, Pittsburgh, Bay Area, um, there's a hive in Indonesia, there's a hive in India, uh, they're still kind of working things out, but there's a lot of, there's a hive in Kansas City, a hive in Chattanooga, so you get the point, um, we're global and across the North America more, uh, more, more like concentrated. But high, the high Chicago iteration, and it looks similar in these other places, but also different, um, is a uh, collection of 64 member organizations in the city of Chicago. Those range from, actually, before I tell you more about Chicago, I just want to say one last thing which is that uh, the high learning networks, the global network, is uh, facilitated and curated by the Mozilla Foundation. And in some cities like Chicago and New York and Toronto, uh, high staff like myself are actually um, employees of the Mozilla Foundation. Um, Mozilla's uh, stake in the game to some extent is that um, connecting young people to these different experiences almost necessarily requires making use in an intelligent way of modern technology, in particular of the web, to facilitate that information sharing and those connections. So building web literacy among young people is one of the strategies that Mozilla uses to connect young people um, to new learning experiences. So that's Mozilla's stake in the game. Going back to Chicago, um, Chicago is a collection of 64 member organizations, and those range from very small communities, organizations of one or half a staff person with no budget to citywide agencies like the public libraries or the Chicago Park District. So there's a lot of different stakeholders in the game, um, and they're all coming together to sort of reimagine what those learning experiences look like in school and at our convenings and when we actually get that the uh, granular level of who's having these conversations, who's doing the work, it ranges from the executive directors of some of these organizations to the people in the classroom with the young people doing the learning. It's a very diverse group of people in different positions at their organizations and a diverse group of motivations. Um, so High Chicago uh, is bringing all these people together and really asking, how do we connect up these experiences? But there are real challenges to doing this work. When we talk about helping young people follow um, their, so actually, sorry, I didn't prepare the speeches. So I have to backtrack occasionally. Uh, I think what, before I tell you about the challenges, it's more to tell you what our major goals are. So we kind of three 
goals that we work collaboratively together on. These are member generated, member source goals. Um, and I actually have, I count, uh, three official members in the house right now. So we've got Smart Chicago Collaborative Representative Hylier, um, David Bill from the Nature Museum, and Simeon from Utopia. Um, so they're, they're actually here so you can ask them some more questions, follow up after I'm done. But these members have generated some goals for our network. What do we have to actually, you know, what are the things that are important to creating this ecosystem? They include more equitable access to learning opportunities. So what does that mean? If it's not obvious, it's about spreading out the different resources that we have available to facilitate learning in a way that is more equitable. So connecting young people who are traditionally underserved and learning opportunities to those opportunities. Creating pathways through learning, and that means that connected piece, which is really saying learning's not a series of disconnected events that happen randomly in random places, but it's about creating a trail that a young person can follow to pursue their own interests. And the third is being innovative. Um, and when we mean innovative, we don't mean just for innovation's sake, but that when we push ourselves to try new things, right, that's when we break the boundaries that constrain us in our current model. So it's being innovative when we need to be, um, but also always pushing ourselves to break those boundaries um, that constrain us in our current model which is a very disconnected experience for many young people that is not equitably distributed. But those are really, really aspirational goals, right? So like, when does one ever attain true equity in any case? As soon as you do, something else becomes unfair. It's something you're always kind of pursuing. And so to get us to this like never ending goal of establishing a more equitable uh, distribution of resources in Chicago, we wanted to set some very actionable, um, actionable like, uh, outcomes, things that we could work on, challenges, identify challenges that are going to get us towards those big goals. So we actually identified um, six different challenges, uh, which we call moonshots. Um, and our moonshots are, uh, you know, it's, it's actually using that um, that idea of shooting for the moon. Um, they're, they're real big, lofty challenges. They're hard. But there are things that we can kind of measure more, more explicitly and have a better sense of where we're going to get. Just like our goals are sourced by our members, our moonshots were as well. So some of this is a little hard or whatever. I don't, I didn't prepare slides, so you're going to have to make do with my emails. But um, my links to our website. But the uh, the the different the six different challenges we identified, six different moonshots, are around um, a school hive connection. A lot of our members are not part of the traditional school system. They're out of school time providers, they're community-based organizations. So it's very important that we bridge that connection to school, which is something we're working on. Um, engaging and educating parents. So this is bringing parents into the conversation about education and making them an active player in the young person's, uh, in the young person's life um, when it comes to learning. Um, engaging young people in a meaningful way in their own education, so bringing their voice to the table to have them provide feedback on what we're providing them, right? So it's more of a conversation about their experience and less of a top-down hierarchical structure. Um, something called the ultimate hub or the on-ramps group, and that's really about connecting and serving these young people with information about their learning. So whereas the youth, the youth voice piece is about bringing their um, perspective into the conversation. This is about getting that information out to them about the things that they can do, helping facilitate those connections. Transportation. This is a real issue around equity and around connectedness. A lot of young people in Chicago cannot get out of their neighborhood to reach those opportunities that are all concentrated downtown in museums or in other really cool places that we get to enjoy if we have that freedom of motion. So how do we create solutions for young people who are trapped by the transportation constraints of their city? And then lastly, um, what's called the think tank or data group in the hive, and that's how does our network make use of data? Um, how do we make use of information and data sources to inform how we build solutions to these issues? Um, a lot of this is around building competency. Some of this is about real concrete solutions to problems. Uh, so these are our shots. This is our framework. Why do we have this framework? Well, one of the things that we're really trying to do is create um, a, a work environment for adult professionals 
in education that feels like an open source collaboration, that feels like a project that anyone can get involved in, make a small contribution to, make a big contribution to, become a leader of, but that's sort of open for anyone's engagement. This is a work in progress, but the member source goals, the member source challenges, and the curation that we do on our website are all intended to make it a community investment, uh, a project that uh, has a strong community investment so that any one of our members is feeling like they can contribute to and is providing information to the community that invites others to get engaged as well so that anyone else can get engaged. Um, so let me tell you quickly about how you can get engaged um, and an event we had recently and how that went. And then I'd like actually Kyla and David to say a few things about their connections to the Hive. Um, so, and I want to give you a few examples of what some of these things are. How am I doing on time? Good? Chris, somebody asked. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, so, uh, actually, let me, let me back up and tell you about this event we just had. So, we have these challenges, and uh, I actually, uh, I have a video of the event. Uh, I'm not connected to speakers, so I have to do that somehow. It should, it should still play. Um, yeah, do you think it'll, like, there's no sound, all right? No, there's. We've got the one. Yeah, is this thing carried? It's a mini DVI, so I don't think it carries any sound. It'd have to be HDMI. I actually don't have an HDMI code. So, uh, whatever, I'm going to talk over it. Um, so, we just had this event. It was called Hot Chicago Buzz. Uh, it was really cool. It was at New 1647. I don't know if you've ever been there. It's an amazing space. You should check it out. It's in Pilsen. Um, and it's a community. Uh, you know, hacker space, um, maker space, community center for young people, and a startup innovation kind of engine for uh, the neighborhood of Pilsen and beyond throughout Chicago. Um, we had this event where we brought our communities to met together as in, in the spirit of a hack day, and I just remember to contribute. A couple of you were there, and I really appreciated Josh coming out for that event. Um, and, uh, and others uh, who were there were made an awesome contribution. So I want to give you a sense of like the kind of solutions we're talking about. David is going to give you a very specific one for a group that he leads, but I want to give you another example, which is around transportation. So um, the transportation group actually broke out into three solutions. There's one group that's working on student-produced public service announcements for young people. They're as obvious but important as things like educating their peers about bus trackers. A lot of young people don't even know that those resources are available or that they can track the bus on their phone. And so in many cases, they're not showing up to the bus on time or they're missing trains that they could make and getting 10 or 15 minutes late to something important because they actually don't even know that they can keep track of that information. So some kids made videos around that. Um, another group that was being uh, supported by a developer from Zooniverse built a very simple data collection tool that educators could use at the start of any program to assess their young person's trip to or from their program. Just like the Divi data presents a particularly powerful um, snapshot of how, young, of how people get around in the city of Chicago, the data that we could collect from young people about their tri trips to these programs can provide a very powerful tool for us to communicate what those challenges are and what are the major routes that they're using that can influence policy. So something as simple as a small tool, a little app, a BuzzFeed style quiz that asks young people about how they got there can be a powerful policy tool once we collect that information. And then the third one that I thought was really interesting was an Uber-like solution for shared ride opportunity, uh, shared ride app for young people. So a way for program providers to actually secure rides for their youth, right? To identify routes, hire drivers, and track their youth along those path, along those trajectories, so that they can assure their young people have a safe trip to their location in a way that, um, and also know who's coming and who's not. So it's a really cool solution. It's called Waggers. They're working on it. It's something to do with Waggle Beats. Uh, and they're they're continuing that work now. So these are the kinds of interesting you know, youth-driven or adult-driven, tech-driven, or just, you know, standard media-driven solutions to some of these problems that we're working on. I want to give you a flavor of them. Um, so finally, how to get engaged. If you go to our website, uh, you can learn a lot about us. It's, it's not the hottest site ever, but we got a full map of all our membership. 
you'll see where the concentration is and what we mean when we're talking about challenge of equitable distribution of resources and about transportation. That struggle is real and it's very much uh, visualized in the map of our membership, which are the major um, learning providers in the city of Chicago. It doesn't have every library site or every park district site, which by the way, could be a thing we could use some help with. Just getting like that information would be really interesting and powerful. Um, you can learn about our membership. You can also sign up for our mailing list if you want to learn more about how we're moving ahead and what we're doing. Just go to connect, join us, and you can sign up for our mailing list. Um, you can also attend our monthly meetups from 9 a.m. to noon, uh, once a month, every third Thursday. It's very regular. Usually at the Howard Washington Library, we have a monthly meetup. You can come learn about what we're doing and what our educators are doing. Sign up for mailing lists, hang out at our meetups, definitely a way to go, follow us on Twitter, um, whatever. And connect with us that way because we could use many of your contributions. So I'm going to kind of give some examples maybe of what Smart Chicago is doing with the Hive and the kind of supports they're providing. And I'm going to get, let David give an example of the kinds of solutions we can still use some support in building. I think you're a big build, building. So at least you uh, might get two ideas about projects that are ongoing we can get involved with. I'll be around if you want to talk some more about the Hive and about how we work, our operating principles on here. Um, how do you want to say a few words about Smart? Smart's rolling. Yeah, I can. Hi, awesome. Thank you.